Hey y'all, it's Miss Welch. Let's have a discussion about chemical bonding. Now, in chemistry, a bond is an attraction, an electrical attraction between two elements. And so there are several different types of bonds. We're going to talk about covalent, ionic, the difference in nonpolar and polar bonds, and then hydrogen bonds. So let's get started. Now, the reason that bonds occur between two different atoms all goes back to their electrons. So the sharing or giving and taking of electrons is what creates a bond between those two atoms. So let's first look at ionic bonds. Now an ion, if you recall, is a charged particle, a charged atom. So for example, this sodium atom here has two electrons in its first electron orbital and then eight in its second and then one in its outer orbital. So if it lost this last electron from its outer shell and gave it away, then this would be, or look at this one down here, this one is one electron short, so it's a positive ion. It gave up some negative, gave up an electron. Now this chlorine over here is the opposite. It has two in the first string, it has eight in the next string, and then if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons, it would like to have eight to fill that outer valence electron shell. So if it takes that electron, as you can see down here, it takes that electron from sodium, it now has eight, but that's more than it should have, more than it has as a stable element. So one more means it has a negative charge because it has an extra electron. So these two are ions. Now they bond together because of that give and take of an electron. As one ion gave to the other, now they are, they are forever joined together, or at least temporarily joined together. Uh, I think about it uh, like a little kid following a bully around. So if the bully took the little kid's cookie, then the little kid would follow the bully around trying to get the cookie back. So they're, they're linked together because of that relationship of give and take. A covalent bond is the opposite. Instead of giving and taking electrons, the two elements, the two atoms, now share them. So if you look at this one, hydrogen and hydrogen, each of them have one electron. And remember that lowest electron shell can have two, not eight like the upper level. So that smallest shell would like to have two to be stable. Since they only have one, if they would just share that other one and each of them take some temporary custody, then they would both be happy. They would share uh, that, elect that electron. And so now they can both have that second level filled at least part of the time and that bonds them together. So co, like any other word that has co, co-captain, cooperation, covalent, they are sharing. You can see this in other examples. Sometimes the uh, the two atoms will share more than one electron. So if you look at oxygen here, this is two atoms of oxygen making a molecule of oxygen gas. And so the second ring uh, orbital of electrons has six typically in oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and so they're each too short, right, to make the eight. So if they would share temporarily, share two of those electrons as shown here, then they would each have eight at least some of the time and that would uh, make a covalent or a double covalent bond because they're sharing twice. Now, you're not gonna be expected in anatomy and physiology or biology necessarily to know exactly when all these are happening. Uh, there's a lot of chemistry involved in determining whether a bond is an ionic bond or a covalent bond. But I can give you a few pointers if you know the the atoms are usually charged, usually show up as, as ions like sodium, potassium, chlorine, hydrogen, then a lot of times those are going to be um, the ionic bonds. Uh, if you see two things that are exactly the same, then that's going to be covalent. Because if they are the same, they're going to share. They're going to be like twins. They're going to help each other, and they're not going to give and take and pull away from each other. That has to deal with all their chemical electronegativity. 
When two things share identically equally, that's when we say they are nonpolar. So this would be a nonpolar covalent bond because oxygen and oxygen have the same electronegativity, same charges exactly, so they are going to share exactly the same. So nonpolar means there is no pole. There's no extra tug one way or the other, like north-south pole, and you know they have to the, have the electromagnetic fields. There is no pull, no extra pull one way or the other if these are the same. So if you see oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, hydrogen gas, anything that's exactly the same two elements uh, bonded together, then that's going to be a nonpolar covalent bond. Now, water is probably the best example of a polar covalent bond. So, remember water is H2O, right? So, if you look at this picture, or either one of these, they're trying to show you that oxygen is in the center, and then this is a hydrogen, and this is a hydrogen. So, look at this one. Oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen, okay? And the oxygen is weakly negative. It has more of those electrons, right? And it has a higher electronegativity. It's going to keep the electrons more on its side. Hydrogen is a positive ion, so it's going to have a weakly positive end. And when they join, there is just a little bit of a pull where the oxygen is going to pull a little bit more negative and the hydrogen is going to pull a little bit more positive. So you end up with two poles. So look, this one shows you negative and positives as well. Um, you have two poles, and that allows us to have hydrogen bonding. So if you can imagine this negative here that's on an oxygen, as another water molecules float nearby, just like this one up here, it would go, ooh, this is negative, but this is positive. I mean, I have a buddy already. I'm already bonded, but, you know, that looks like a pretty good party over there, too. And the negative charge of the oxygen is weakly attracted to that positive. So it's not enough attraction to pull them apart, right? Water doesn't just break apart willy-nilly, but there's enough attraction to pull that water molecule close to the one nearby and still um, be a little bit attracted. That weak attraction between a negative and positive pole is a hydrogen bond. So the bonds here that actually connect the water molecules inside them that connect the atoms uh, of hydrogen and oxygen are polar covalent. They have a little bit of a pole, but they're sharing, so they're covalent. The bonds that are between one water and another water are where those weak interactions are. Those are hydrogen bonds, and hydrogen bonding is the reason we have all the properties of water, like surface tension, where the little bugs can walk across the water, because this weak attraction holds them together just enough for some pressure on top to keep them from falling apart. Uh, or if you've done the penny trick, where you take a penny and you put as many drops of water on top as you can and it bubbles over and eventually it spills off, right, when you put too many. Well, they're actually like kind of doing acrobatics. Each one of those bonds, those weak interactions, one water molecule is near another one and they're like acrobats, like holding on, like, oh, please don't let go of me. But it's only a weak interaction. It doesn't make a new molecule. And so eventually you put enough pressure and they fall apart. It's just weak. We use these hydrogen bonds in DNA. They help hold the two strands of DNA together in the double helix, but we have to unwind it, right, to do things like replication, uh, mitosis, and meiosis, and so those have to be just weak interactions, and hydrogen bonds can be broken apart to separate the strands um, in those different DNA processes. There's another good vocab distinction on this page that you may or may not have noticed before. Um, this right here, where we have oxygen and drawn out, we see the hydrogens attached on either side of the oxygen, is the structural formula for water. So the structural formula for any compound is to actually draw it out in a three-dimensional, it doesn't have to be as three-dimensional as this model over here, but at least with the letters and the bonds, so that you can see kind of how that molecule is arranged. That's the structural formula. The molecular formula just writes out the letters. So like H2O, that's the molecular formula. It tells you what's in the molecule, but it doesn't really give any indication as the shape or what order those atoms are bonded together. So you may see that vocabulary difference between molecular and structural formulas of different compounds. 
Okay, that's all for our brief description of chemical bonds between different types of atoms. Thanks for watching.